Hello everyone. Our topic for today is sources of information, accessibility, and effectiveness. Why do we need to study this? To verify credibility of information. Is the information written by an expert or a person knowledgeable about the topic? Is the information free from information gap, misinterpretation, and misinformation? And to protect ourselves against fake news. In researching information, we can use primary sources. Examples are artifacts, diaries, manuals, interviews, photos, journals, letters, original documents, audio recordings, video recordings, and speeches. These are first-hand raw data or documents made by a person who witnessed the event. Next is secondary sources. Examples are biographical works, history, books, evaluation, news, and criticisms. These are second-hand information, meaning they are based from primary sources. Last are tertiary sources. Examples are almanacs, directories, encyclopedia, bibliography, database, abstracts, indices, and dictionaries. They came from either primary or secondary sources of information. If you are looking for information on a specific topic, you can use primary, secondary, and tertiary sources of information. Here are some specific sources of information. First, scholarly articles. These are articles written by experts or scholars, peer-reviewed, technical and has specific methods. Examples are research projects and studies. Uh, they involve results of experiments, surveys, or review and analysis of existing data. Here's an example. Okay, so this is from International Journal of Pedagogical Development and Lifelong Learning. And the research Article is entitled, The COVID-19 Pandemic Through the Lens of Education in the Philippines, The New Normal. So this is an example of a scholarly article. Another way to get information is through books. Books provide information segregated into chapters or parts. It is a synthesized version of information. Examples are textbooks and novels. So, these are examples of textbooks and novels. To make your essay more reliable and valid, you can also use government documents. Examples are reports, statistics, censuses, law, court proceedings, and orders. This is an example of a DepEd order. So, this is about policy guidelines for the provision of learning resources. Another example is this, statistics about population of the Philippines. And here is an example of an executive order from the office of the president. These documents are usually available online via government websites or upon request from government agencies. Another way to get information is through the use of newspapers and magazine. News and magazine articles provide timely information, non-technical explanations, and opinions and news. Examples are school paper, major newspaper, and magazines. This is an example of a school paper, major newspaper, and magazine. You can use this to get the information you needed for your essay or article. 
And last, you can also use reference materials. This contains both primary and secondary sources. Reference materials provide answers to questions that are factual and detailed. Examples are encyclopedias, atlas, almanac, and dictionary. So these are examples of reference materials. Why is it important to evaluate the sources of information? It is important to evaluate the information you will use and look for its effectiveness and accessibility. When we say effectiveness, it is the degree of achieving the desired results or information. Meaning, does it have the correct information you are looking for? When we talk about accessibility, we talk about the quality of being easy to find, obtain, and use. Is the information easily accessible? Can it be easily read? Does it have photos, audio, video, which we can use to verify information? Remember, we need to review the sources of information to satisfy expectations of readers. We cannot provide them fake news. Readers want factual and reliable information. Second, show important information and evidences. Third, show that your writing does not rely on opinion and that it has factual data too. Show how you evaluate the information to come up with a conclusion. We base the conclusion from analysis of many information that you gathered. Fifth, integrate material from different sources meaning you, own, you did not only use books, you also use other learning materials such as references, encyclopedias, newspapers, scholarly articles, among others. Six, enable readers to follow up references. Readers can double check and read original documents that you use. And last, avoid plagiarism, meaning do not use ideas of others without their consent. Here is an example essay with different sources of information. The title of this essay is Education in the Philippines in the Time of COVID-19. This is the first paragraph. This is the introduction. The World Health Organization announced a year ago that the cases of COVID-19 outside China increased, posting a global threat known as pandemic. Because of COVID-19, schools implemented varied distance learning to continue the education. But there were problems encountered, such as lack of readiness and inadequate learning materials, among others. The first sentence is the background. It gives information why pandemic happened. The second sentence is the main idea. The main idea is the implementation of varied distance learning and the problems encountered. In the body, I need to discuss what is distance learning and varied distance modalities. So, the first paragraph of our body is this. Distance learning, according to Britannica, is a form of education where the teacher and students are physically separated during instruction and the use of various technologies are needed to facilitate teaching and learning. In the Philippines, under the Department of Education Order No. 12 Series of 2020, also known as the Basic Education Learning Continuity Plan, the distance learning offered are online and printed modular learning. TV and radio-based instruction, blended learning, and homeschooling. The first sentence in this paragraph is an example of an information from an encyclopedia. The definition of distance learning came from Britannica. The second sentence came from a DepEd order. So this is an example of a government document. The next paragraphs will be about the problems encountered in distance learning. According to Lapada and other authors, 
in their study entitled Teachers' COVID-19 Awareness, Distance Learning Education, Experiences and Perceptions Towards Institutional Readiness and Challenges. Most of the teachers, students, and schools are not equipped with the facility and training for distance education during difficult times. Moreover, the length of teaching experience and specialization, as well as the geographic locations of the teachers, are very strongly connected to their readiness to handle distance learning. This information came from a scholarly article. In the news article of Magsambol from Rappler entitled, Distance Learning in the Philippines, A Year of Hits and Misses, he analyzed experiences from students, parents, and teachers and highlighted concerns such as distance learning is not good for mental health, students learning less, flawed learning modules, and not enough gadgets for students to use. This is an example of an information from a news article. Deped Secretary Leonor Magtolis Briones, however, encouraged all education stakeholders to learn from the past, innovate, and act together amidst the impact of pandemic to education. So basically, these three paragraphs are the body of this essay. Now, the last paragraph is the conclusion. There are many challenges in the distance education, such as the lack of readiness of both teachers and students, and not enough quality materials and gadgets to use. However, quality learning must continue amid pandemic. Basically, the conclusion is a summary of what you talk about in the body. And also, the last sentence would be your message to the readers of your essay. So. As you can see, this essay made use of different sources of information from encyclopedia, from government document, from scholarly articles, from news articles. Remember, when you're writing, do not copy the information from other sources word for word. Avoid plagiarism. Rewrite it using your own understanding, using your own words so that you will avoid plagiarism. You will see in these references that I used varied sources of information, such as Deped Order, an example of a government document, Britannica, an online encyclopedia, a scholarly article from the International Journal of Learning, Teaching, and Educational Research, news articles from Rappler and Manila Bulletin. Thank you very much for listening and I hope you learned. Don't forget to like and subscribe.